<laughs> you can give it through here. Oh, we have it? Oh, finally, good. Who is? It's Julian here as well. Hi, <laughs> ah, hey, Julian. That's Julian. That's Sven. And that's Texas. Right. So, so this is uh, our Qigong. So I'm talking fast, no? Turn it on, on the side. Oh, very important. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are you? Right. Uh, so we are the Jokam community, and uh, we are pro programmers, computer exorcists, playing users, and we are available at Jokam Org. And what do you do? Awesome stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> we do uh, high performance bindings for <laughs> graphics, audio, media, and processing. And we have a community platform, repositories, bug tracking, build server, mailing list, forum, etc. So everybody should feel at home. We have open and render independent, BSD license, BlueGen uh, here for audio, uh, 3D, and processing uh, this stuff. I don't know how the laser pointer works. Uh, so if you want to know more about this stuff, see if the last year's presentation of FOSTAM. Today we will talk about something completely different. Shall I ask you now? What the heck is Jigong? <laughs> okay, Jigong. That is the project spirit. And he looks like this. It's a, it's a Chinese monk. He lived in a monastery. But uh, he did not uh, follow the monastic codes because he drank wine, uh, ate meat. So they kicked him out of the temple. Like he went to a street. And however, he was kind hearted. And he roamed the street and he helped people whenever he could. So he was hands-on out there helping people, solving the issues they were facing. So he was not sitting inside the temple, he was out on the streets. And that's what the Yigong project would like to do. So Sven, what the heck is Yigong? So it's not, a, a, well, like, we don't implement a VM technology or anything. Uh, or create a new ecosystem or involve lawyers, at least we don't plan to. Uh, so we want to build upon existing stuff, JamVM, Hotspot, OpenJDK, ISD, etc. Ensure availability on all platforms for devices for real, meaning not just academic, download source, etc. But, you know, you... So we do this now with Jokem for, I don't know, for many years. So uh, providing the, the, the stuff to download on all platforms, make it available. And hard parts to enable it, like ISD Web, we show you a little example later. And uh, use all alternative VM tags. So Dalvik, like our... Our bindings are running on Android as well right now, and uh, planned our RoboVM, LLVM, IR. So that's, of course, very of, of our interest as well. <coughs> and is it now me again? Yeah. <laughs> There's something called OpenJDK and IST. Sex. Glad you asked. Because we <laughs> love the DPL2 ecosystem that's provided around IST and OpenJDK. Uh, IST, you see that that's the a freedom fighter, the brute let life into the code that was done by some microsystem. They added some missing parts so that you can actually run it. Uh, they made it possible to easily build the system in the beginning on Unix platforms. <coughs> and they added support for mobile CPU architectures. This means that you cannot only run OpenUDK on the architecture that OpenUDK will be sourced for because they extended it using this alternative alternative implementations such as YAMVM, and, and so, it's, so now it's uh, working on all Linux distributions on mobile. And IST also provide a deployment of because this was mi missing in a BDK. You don't, didn't have the web start, you didn't have the browser plugin. So the IST provides IST web, and this is something what we want to build upon. So Sven, don't you know there's something called IST and OpenUDK? Yeah, but however, the intent and priorities are sometimes different of the corporate world and, you know, what the user really wants to experience. <laughs> so this is freedom-wise, like maybe there are restrictions, I don't know. Technology-wise, maybe the corporate world has other interests, like server-side, no user interfaces. Or maybe they just don't want their VM technology being deployed on mobile platform in the world. You know, we don't know why that is, but sadly it is so. But hey, it's free software, so... Yeah, can't react. Me again. 
<laughs> so why do we still create Eagle? So this is so right now we have an ecosystem of OpenJDK, like that's a middleman. Oracle is dragging on the one and on one end, and IST and the GPL and the Freedom is dragging on the other end. So this is at least how we see it. Um, so here you have the fear, uncertainty, and doubt issue. So this is of course regarding the patent grant. Uh, there is no explicit statement that you can use this technology across all devices, etc. On the contrary, you know, uh, there is some between the line notion of you can, you, we don't want you to use this on mobile devices or something. So this is of course in contrast to the four freedoms. I mean, we are here at Boston, so you know, for any purpose, change it as you wish, redistribute copies, distribute modified version, for any purpose, like, don't ask, just use it. And uh, it's uh, quite important to see how the four freedoms uh, correlate to the freedoms governments give to their people uh, in order for the government not to attack the people. So in, uh, in, as people, we usually get freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, that means you should not need to know where your next meal comes from. And freedom from fear, you should not get sued. And uh, in free software, yeah, this is built, right? And in free software, we we incorporate this into the licenses uh, as in freedom. However, uh, however uh, the current situation is we have uh, for long time left open UDK builds for Windows, OXS, and Android. This has become much better during the recent years because we have some products like Adopt Open UDK, uh, Open Build Factory by Henry Gomez, and uh, uh, we have the unofficial uh, Open UDK build, at least for Windows and OS X, by Alex Casco now. So, so he is building the ISP source code and providing tools. So it's looking better, but we're still missing Android. Uh, we have no ISP web builds for Windows, OS X, Android, etc. Yeah, and so, so this means like the freedoms, they should be. Uh, substantialized by reality, meaning the VM technology is really available. Available means you don't need to download a proprietary version. So this was all politics, right? So are there, is there any real work to do, technical enhancements? So here's a list and we go through them yeah. now one by one. So first is what I talked about, we need to make bills available. That's. Uh, based on the GPLv2 based on the UDK ISP. The source code by the runtime that works on both desktop and mobile and uh, support more CPU architectures. Um, it's, it's, so in uh, the GGong project we focus on just to have a core subset. So in Open UDK 8 we have the core profile. We, we think that is really great because that actually solves the need that we wanted. Yeah. Well, well, Finally, get the AWT stuff up. <laughs> yeah, so you have a runtime without the AWT. Yeah. So, and this uh, brings us to the next technical mm -hmm. advancement. Uh, we want to have a... Yeah, that's a, that's a web plugin. So to, to, in the end, having available a plugin, an app that even though we know it's a dying species or something. Uh, however, uh, it is not possible with AWT, etc. So, so we need to focus on a native window-based uh, plugin without AWT. We call it now Applet 3 here. And uh, so we, we are based on this native window thing. So we have the browser side with the runtime environment, virtual machine and libraries, some plugin code, um, without AWT and complicated stuff. So no user interface, whatever. And the RT, we don't care. I mean, it could be hotspot, it could be maybe RoboVM, uh, whatever. And um, on the user side, the user decides what UI it plugs in. For example, we have Nude and Joggle, but if you don't like it, you know, choose something else. You use your Direct 3D or whatever monster and plug it in, and you can render everything with it. Show the demo? Oh, show, showing the demo, right. So this was, right, this was that, enable plug in on mobile device, and you went through it. Yes, and now we show the demo. Yes, maybe? All top, right. Just so the, the dual is not there. So this is the infamous gears. So this is now, yeah. So this is uh, showing an, uh, a gears, or a gears applet, whoever went to our site, they know that. Um, 
it takes a while. So now the ice tea is, is, is warming up everything. So this is now not using AWT. So this is uh, uh, a branch that we have on our site. So this just did uh, yesterday or something. So you can do all these native windowing stuff. We can do with AWT as well. Um, However, the client now does not require to be AWT, and you have to trust me on this now. But <laughs> you can download it, of course. It's a Git repository. Um, it would have been cool if we could show this on a Jolla device with Wayland, new and Wayland binding, uh, but this is not done yet. So, you know, time is, is limited. Um, and then you can show here the, the user interface stuff. So this is how we think how you should do it. Like, uh, you know, you, you should render your user interface with OpenGL, and, and have these awesome frame rates. So all these curves you see, fonts, etc., this is done uh, on the GPU. Um, some people use it already in production, like to have it in a, in a 3D scene, some, some uh, user interface labels, etc. Yeah, so this is just a, just a showcase. And so the next step we do is like support <coughs> other user interfaces. We want to see that this plugin works on Android, uh, like with Wayland, etc., so it can be actually used in mobile devices. Okay. That's it. Oh, yeah, one interesting thing for the IST folks, so, so this was just an applet launcher, and the native libraries were loaded by our, our Bluegen core, and so on and so forth. That's another deployment thing. I can just mention, native window, that's uh, uh, every operating system got its own native window data structure. So if you are running on a Windows machine, it's a window, Windows, H window handle. If you're running on X11, it's a window. If you're on an Android, it's a A window. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so this is different, depending on which operating system you use. And uh, but but, they are but you only need this if you want to use hardware actuation, because all the graphics libraries that use that enables hardware actuation, they need this window handle. So it's crucial that if you're working a plugin, you you want to deploy some language on the top of the Java virtual machine and you want to have access to hardware acceleration, it's crucial that uh, you can get access to this window handle. So we make a very lean implementation yeah. inside the plugin, so the plugin provides this, and then it's the Java code's running task to initialize this native window. Because the uh, Java knows which kind of platform it's running. Yeah. So, so hacking, hacking here, IST web uh, uh, to remove AWT. It, most of it was removed code, so that was. Okay. We, have, we have good, good with time. We can take just a short question. So, do you have a, a graphics API which uses exposed to Java, which then uses this native window? So I, I didn't understand. Yeah, this is here new. So what you just saw here, you saw you saw a, a window inside the browser, a child window. First, you saw saw a child window, the gear. Then we were reparenting it to a top-level window. So all that work was done by Nude. And the rendering, the content was rendered with Joggle. So this was an OpenGL rendered content. So we, we properly uh, divide windowing toolkit and content, etc. And, you know, like, and yeah. input. And input. Yeah, Nude also right, handles, deals with input. So mouse, keyboard input, etc. that's dealt with as well. And uh, for example, on Raspberry Pi, uh, we don't need a windowing toolkit system. So lately, we, we even rendered the mouse pointer and stuff like that. So, so Newt is a basic native windowing toolkit, and yeah, so it's less complex, you know, not so complex than, than so, the other ones. So this implementation, right. you can say it's source code here. Right here. Yeah. So, so uh, what is this applet 3 thing? Um, so when you know what an applet is, so there's a very little, uh, addition. Um, there's something called applet 3 context now. This is the role of the browser, of the plugin, the plugin side. So this, this is being passed to the implementation of the applet. Um, and this is implemented by the user, of course. Um, so the first thing is the user is being asked to create a native window. So you get the applet 3 context for some information of the browser. Then you have the native window upstream thing. So what is that? That is the uh, yeah, that's a, that's a window <coughs> handle of the browser itself, and you should become a child window of it. And then we do the init. Again, we pass the applet 3 context here. That's sort of redundant. Um, and then we say start, stop, destroy. The applet 3 context right now is always passed, and uh, the applet is just an interface. So we 
properly divide the user part and the plugin part. You know, in the old Apple thing, it's all intermingled. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that already. And then the next one, that's upstream. Uh, what is that? That's upstream. So that, that's a browser window. So the browser window gives you some display connection, whoever needs it, screen index, window handle, uh, dimension, and some other update notification. Uh, Whatever, but uh, so the client actually gets all these three informations and can create a child window uh, with with the given dimensions. And um, then the user again is creating the, the downstream window, meaning the child window, the applet window. We use Newt for that. So you just create a little on-the-fly implementation of this class and pass your your other windowing toolkit uh, stuff in there. So uh, it's important that the plugin can destroy the window. Um, and you can get the handle, the plugin can request the focus, set visibility, call a display if you have no animator or something running. Yeah, that's so so yeah. it's important to know that the user in this case <coughs> can be a free the engine, it can be a new window toolkit, an yeah. existing window yeah. toolkit, and then the end user application finally uses uh, this new AI that, yeah. that the toolkit provides. So yeah. that means that the browser product plugin should not provide a UI toolkit. It should not. It should provide what you need in order to provide a good. Yeah, user. this is here. The browser provides the typical stuff like show document. You know that get document base, get code base, etc. So this is what the browser provides. So here we have the clean separation again. Okay, okay questions today? Oh, okay, we, we will go on. We will mention one other technical enhancement that we think is, yeah. will be needed to be done. And we brainstormed and came up with something <coughs> we call source certification contract. Yeah. And what is this? It's based on one simple idea. Trust the source code user. <coughs> and uh, because the source code, that's that defines the application, what it should be. So the user should trust the source code. But we cannot yet solely depend on the source code because uh, users usually get handed a binary. So it has passed through some tool chain, like a black box, uh, unless we know exactly that this tool chain does not change the source code. I could be evil and inject some viruses in the production, right? Yeah. Who knows? So, so instead, we think we could uh, tell the user which developers trust this source code. And more important, trust the build source code. So, and developers, they, uh, they want to be able to develop their application. They have access to the source code tree. So if you don't trust the developers, you should not trust the source code. So we wanted to replace having a, a certificate uh, uh, certificate authority. authority. Uh, like when you buy a certificate to sign your application. We would like to replace this with a chain of trust. So you use PDP, DPG. Debian uses that, you know, very successful. So like all the packages are, are assigned. And this is the next uh, major part. The idea is to store the binary signatures inside a public access of the source code repository. That gives you the benefit that you can gracefully revoke a binary build when security flaws. For example, if you release 10 applications, one of them has got a security flaw. You can fine grade to tell the user that this application is not trusted anymore without having to revoke the developer's own certificate. So that's the idea. You should be able to revoke a single binary, not all your binaries. And since every binary tells where the source code is located, otherwise you can verify the above. Uh, it needs access to the binary source code, and that's very important, so that the user knows which source code this binary claims originate from, and it can check which the developer trusts this source code tree, and uh, are certain that this binary came from this source code. One uh, use case of this, like what we already do in software development when it's in security critical missions, is that you always track things from coast to coast. So you have your requirement management, uh, source code change, um, test case, um, and then you confirm that, and with the confirmation, you put in your your uh, commit messages, git hash values, etc. So you have a coast-to-coast -coast ecosystem 
uh, from requirement, bug tracking, source code change, and test, etc. So you have a holistic approach of, of the thing you ever develop, uh, uh, deliver. And this is following the same spirit, like you have your source code and your binary, and they both come together. Who benefits users? Just from the uh, designers, they know what license uh, they don't need to be feared. The software developers, they can easily collaborate with community and they care about their binaries uh, instead of the author's identity. And so, thank you. Oh, we are. Thank you. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> and uh, more t-shirts, more t-shirts outside. Oh, you have to do it, thank you. I don't have oh, a bike Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. That's it.